One thing that influencers seem to be doing a lot recently is faking having some kind of illness or condition, either for money or for sympathy, or more importantly, for clout. I remember a few months ago, there was a TikToker that actually faked having Tourette's. That is not a joke. They would basically pretend to have tics and stuff while filming videos, so you felt sorry for them. And more importantly, you would buy their products and support their TikTok page. <laughs> Now, thankfully, that TikToker was outed and they had the punishment of being brought to the front stage where everyone could laugh at them and throw rotten fruit at them. Basically, that became a public spectacle. Everyone realized they're a fake and then everyone forgets because internet news comes and dies within five seconds. Well, somehow recently, someone has actually won up to that because you've got a TikToker recently that was outed for faking having cancer. I wish it was a bit. I wish I could sit here and say April Fool's, despite it being, you know, like late October. But nope, it is 100% true that a TikToker has recently been outed for faking having cancer. So who is this TikToker, you might wonder? It's Madison Russo, not to be confused with the Russo guy that plays the Incredible Hulk. So Addison Russo was basically your run-of-the-mill American TikTok creator. She wasn't a big account by any means, but she gained notoriety at the start of this year in January, but not for the reason you'd expect. Usually on TikTok, if you gain any kind of notoriety, it's doing some kind of weird like dance or maybe a Fortnite clip, or maybe you just repost something that I show speed did. I'm not joking. The biggest ways to grow on TikTok right now is basically do a dance, repost I show speed, or repost part of a movie clip and then caption it something really vague. So everyone in the comments goes, what film is this guys? What TV show is this? So then it farms engagement and gets even more views. Kind of like how with my main channel videos, I'll title something the scariest game of a made or the best free game you haven't played and don't actually name the game to bait you all into clicking on the title. It does work. It's a tried and true method. Ambiguity is king. But surprisingly, Madison didn't actually get put on the map for that. It was actually because of a first degree theft charge. And she lives in Iowa, and the charge of that can be up to 10 years in prison. Now, surprisingly, I'm no law expert, I'm no Saul Goodman, but I'm assuming a first-degree theft charge is the same as a first-degree murder charge in the sense that you premeditated it, you planned it out. So if they raided a house, they probably would have found a big blueprint sheet looking like the Payday 2 loadout screen. You know, where everyone draws circles and then someone will try and draw a penis before the game actually starts. Now, what was that theft charge? What Payday 2 heist did she make? And believe me, I'm saying a Payday 2 heist because Payday 3 at the minute, that game is DOA. And so they add a ton of content. It is not even being considered. But surprisingly, this story comes full circle because the theft charge was actually stealing money from people because she pretended to have cancer. She faked having a stage two pancreatic cancer, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and a tumor the size of a football that wrapped around her spine. So she didn't just say that she had cancer. She went the whole nine yards. She was basically writing down every single cancer there is saying, I have that. And for everyone, I should actually be getting double money. So like a lot of people, she documented the progress of her illness on TikTok. Now, this is a very common thing. I don't have a problem with it. It does help a lot of people cope. If you've got a debilitating illness, usually the best case scenario is to kind of spread the message to random strangers or your fan base, you know, let people know what you're going through. Because if anything, it helps document your journey. I think that's a really noble thing to do. But the fact that she's hijacked that and even set up a GoFundMe, it is beyond scummy. So she documented like her fake cancer battle on TikTok, which is basically the equivalent of like having an argument in the shower. There was actually no one there to have the fight with. And on a GoFundMe page, she has raised $37,228 from 538 poor unsuspecting donos. I genuinely feel sorry for all those donators, those people that gave their cold, hard earned money, thinking they were making some kind of difference, improving someone's life. What they've done is basically gave the equivalent of a TTS donor to Hassan when he's left his chair empty. Oh, but it does not end there. Madison apparently made a plan, a scheme to fool everyone. This was the description on her GoFundMe page. It has been very hard on Maddie's family, just like with any cancer diagnosis. The cost of medical bills, gas, meals, and expenses can be a burden. And that is something this family should not have to worry about. If you are able to, donations will be greatly appreciated to help cover medical expenses and to allow Maddie to focus on one thing only, which is to show that she is stronger than cancer and will beat this. Please donate slash share if you can. 
I really do think there are a few people more vile on this planet than someone faking an illness for money. Like, if you're doing it for sympathy or for clout, that's one thing. But then opening an actual full GoFundMe to get people to send you money, thinking they're helping, playing on their good conscience. This is a little bit anecdotal here, but I myself have been the victim of these, like, confidence scams before, or more importantly, scams that play on your goodwill. Like, you think you're being a good person when in reality, you're just giving money to a scammer. So a few years ago, I was walking the streets of Birmingham. I know I should end the story there. I don't know how I made it out alive. I wasn't even wearing my stab vest that day. And then a guy came up to me. He was wearing a business suit, looked pretty well dressed. And he said to me, so at the minute I've got my car, but unfortunately it's out of petrol. I'd refuel it myself, but my credit card's been declined. And also I have no cash. I wouldn't really mind, but tonight I had to travel a couple cities over to go and see my sister who's actually giving birth. Now I do want to put into perspective. I genuinely think I was like 17 or 18 at the time. So this was a long time ago. I was very stupid, very naive. And even like retelling you this story now, I'm kind of laughing to myself at how stupid that sounds. Like it is the most obvious setup imaginable. But me being young and stupid, I forked over my cash. I gave him like 50 quid or so. And he goes, yeah, cheers, mate. Thank you so much. And then he left. And the worst thing is I had no idea at the time it was a scam. What I actually thought at the time is that they were, you know, filming around for like a documentary or something. Or, you know, one of those social experiments of is someone going to give money to, you know, like a stranger or someone in need? Because those social experiments, I know they're all over TikTok but they were plaguing YouTube when I was growing up. So that's what I thought. And I thought I was kind of doing a good thing. And you know, if I look good on the internet, then, you know, fair enough. That was until I saw the same guy two weeks later who didn't recognize me walking out of a bar trying the exact same thing until I recognized him. And then I realized... I've been scammed. I know that's a very far cry from faking cancer and getting a GoFundMe and getting 50 quid as opposed to like $36,000. But it really does go to show that people that do these kind of tricks that play on how much of a generous person you are, they are the lowest of the low. They are complete scum. So Madison on a TikTok account basically became like a, a TED Talk scholar talking about her supposed health struggles at St. Ambrose University, where she'd been a student. But I'll be honest, I find that even hard to believe. I have no idea what she's talking about that is actually real or something she just made up to get sympathy points. And it actually got so bad that she started appearing on podcasts. For example, this podcast backed up by a cancer nonprofit called Project Purple. And then in an interview with the North Scott Press last year, Russo said that she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer on the 10th of February, 2022, and then double tapped with leukemia a few months later. So again, like I said earlier, she's not just saying that she has like, you know, cancer. She's basically acting like she's been hit by all sides, like in the cancer boxing ring. I think the funniest thing is about this situation, if you go onto like any of the articles that are talking about, you know, her pouring her heart out with her cancer diagnosis, some of them have actually now been edited and rewrote to headline with her arrest. And then afterwards, actually talking about her personal struggles that never even happened. I remember hanging up the phone and I was a mess. I was literally bawling, but somehow I ended up getting the courage to wipe away my tears and went back into class, which now when I think about it was pretty crazy. I like how she wrote out in her head all these sympathetic stories. It's like she watched The Notebook with Ryan Gosling and was like, that's how real people act. Okay, I, I'm gonna win them over. I'm gonna win them over. She even said later in the interview, my tumor is on the tail of my pancreas and it's very deep rooted. Doctors said that if they went in, the surgery would do more harm. There was more risk than reward. And it doesn't end there. She's throwing stats on screen, saying herself with absolutely no backing, no proof, not even a, a doctor's note, that she has exactly an 11% survival rate meaning that she would have around five years to live. And then a few days later on Valentine's Day, she claimed that she started her battle with cancer with 15 rounds of oral chemotherapy and 90 rounds of radiation. So again, she's just making it out. Like, I do not know where she's pulling these numbers from. Like maybe she saw the rad counter go up in Fallout 4 or something. It, it is it is really, it, it's just disgusting that she genuinely thinks that she can play people's sympathies like a fiddle. And unfortunately it has worked. Well, it did work because she's raised nearly $40,000, but now thankfully she's been arrested. She followed up by saying the tumor was shrinking and responding to treatment. But wait a minute, wait a minute. If we fully recover, that means no more money. No, we need another hook. I got it. I'm going to say I have leukemia, which is exactly what she did. She said she had leukemia, an aggressive blood cancer, and she refused to give in and remained optimistic. 
You can really tell how this woman's working. She's kind of realizing that she needs to get an out. She needs to recover from this really aggressive cancer. So she's basically saying, oh, I'm, you know, in remission for the one cancer, but now the other cancer that came out of nowhere, that one might get me, guys. Please give me, give me more money, please. Now, the first sneaking suspicion was her constantly going on about chemotherapy and, you know, how aggressive it was. And th there are a lot of side effects with chemotherapy. For example, a lot of your hair can fall out with certain treatments. But despite that, her hair and her TikToks looks absolutely pristine. But do not worry, she has you covered because she knew that people would call her out for this. So she made an actual TikTok going into detail on how she still keeps her hair despite having chemotherapy. I wanted to share was how I am keeping my hair um, during treatment with chemo and radiation. I think it's really been helping because it's like unmedicated. So um, here's the uh, packaging of that. You can just order it online. It comes with like a three month supply. I think the worst thing about this entire situation is she's talking about she's faking having cancer She's getting money for that and now she's almost doing like a product shill I don't know if she was paid for this I pray to god she wasn't because that would just be a double whammy like raising money for a gofundme and on top of that getting a sponsor But she's treating it like a sponsor This is something you would see some middle-aged mom in the middle of the day shilling on the tiktok shop um, I started this right away when I started treatment and then soon after treatment, my mom found this. Um, it's biotin. My mom found it, by the way. My, mo my mom just found this thing that stops people with chemotherapy losing their hair. She found it. She found it in a well. Yeah, it really is embarrassing. I've looked online and there are some links, but obviously, you know, something like that is not going to stop you from losing all of your hair, uh, at least some of it. Before recording, I actually ate this protein cookie. And if you see there, it says four grams of collagen. So hopefully now I'm never going to go bald. Thank you. Thank you, protein cookie. Now, you're probably wondering, how did they actually expose her? How did they find out that she was making all of this up and basically duping people to get herself tens of thousands of dollars? Usually to do that, you'd get a Raid Shadow Legends sponsor. But obviously, this is a lot more dubious. So they had to investigate very, very deep. Well, the first red flag was doctors and nurses found a huge discrepancy between the treatments that she was faking. For example, there was one TikTok posted of a photo of her smiling while hooked up to a gastrostomy tube. But then they actually pointed out that the tube was way too far up her nose to even be effective. And she had a chest port as well that was completely wrongly applied. I just realized I did that. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. The police were then involved and started to investigate her and they actually found out that she had stolen photos that were shared online by real cancer patients and then pass them off as her own, basically saying, yeah, this is me. Yeah, this is me. Can I, can I get more money, please? Please ignore all the people that are on incredibly long waiting times for any kind of treatment for their cancer. Uh, no, I, I, I should go first in line, thank you. Police then realized she basically pulled the wool over everyone's eyes and then got a warrant to search her house. And they found an absolute treasure trove in there. This was like a Destiny 2 raid, but there was actual loot. They found an IV pole, a feeding pump with cotton swabs, a wig, anti-nausea medication that wasn't even prescribed to her, by the way. It was prescribed in a relative's name. It was just to show off in TikTok videos. What is going on with that chest port? I am not a chemo nurse. Never done anything like this, but I want to see if it's actually true. Definitely not comfortable. Uh but I could see if you taped it, it, you could make it work. This is one of my son's old G-tubes. Well, not G-tubes, but food bags. You also have to shove this piece really far up there to get where she was, where she just had the slightest amount of purple showing. My nose is big, but it ain't that big. If you have to go that far to fake a disability, shame on you and again thankfully these people reported it to the authorities and she was promptly arrested back in january so again this seems like pretty old news if it all happened in january well this month we actually got the final verdict on what happened to her and the courthouse was actually based enough to post the entire court proceeding hearing and verdict on their youtube channel imagine getting that kind of justice it's a 20 minute video i don't really want to play the entire video and then just sit here in the corner going well guys well could you believe they did that? Oh my God. And then put in like a, you know, an Asmund Gold reaction thumbnail. But the TLDR, this is basically what the judge had to say. On February 10, 2022, you began an elaborate scheme which involved you supposedly having pancreatic cancer and acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And through this scheme, you deceived your friends, your family, 
your community, other cancer victims, charities and strangers who were motivated by your supposedly tragic story to donate to you to help support you through your disease. Now, Madison did actually take responsibility because they have her completely dead to rights. She can't exactly lie and say that she has cancer when they've checked her medically and she doesn't. But her reasoning is very weird. She says that she didn't do it for money. She didn't do it for fame. She didn't do it for greed. She even says that she didn't do it for attention. She basically says that she did it to get her family back together. A lot of people have made speculation as to why I did this and how somebody who looked like they had everything together could have such a mess. I didn't do this for money or greed. I didn't do this for attention. I did this in an attempt to try and get my family back together. I have no idea why she would say something so stupid. Obviously, the lawyer was not Saul Goodman, but I, I don't understand why you would try to downplay it so much. It is so obvious they have you dead to rights. Just admit it. Say that you did it for money. I mean, the, the, the best thing you could have said is I didn't do it for greed. I did it for attention because I'm that sad and attention star. Because then at least people would be like, you suck. But in kind of a little wriggly worm way, not a master manipulator way. But nope, the cope was, I, I was just trying to get my family back together. My, my family. I want to I want to help everybody. My family. I was actually just going to get the family back together and and then I was going to donate the 40k to charity. But now her sentence has been given out. She's getting no jail time, but a hundred hours of community service. And on top of that, has to pay back the $39,000, which is insane to me. The fact that she only has to pay back the amount of money that she scammed people. Usually there's like an interest or a surcharge, but all she has to do is basically hit refund and she's in the clear. And a hundred hours of community service, that's not a lot. I'd like to point out, by the way, that 100 hours is four days. Now, obviously, I do not expect that she'll be working flat out 24 hours with zero sleep, but four days? I'm assuming that to do the 100 hours of community service, she'll probably only be doing that for a couple weeks, maybe a month. I think the best thing about this whole situation is probably in a couple years, you'll see her rebrand as like some wholesome family-friendly vlog channel like the Ace Family or something. It's, it's just like, I, I, why would you fake having cancer? It's embarrassing. Oh, 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 oh,